For today's video, I've chosen a very provocative title because what we're going to talk about is, in my opinion, very much misunderstood by many people, including economists. Part of the reasons being that, well, most of them tend to just repeat what they have learned without questioning it. Welcome, I'm Olivier Girard, economist, posture therapist, author of the Posture Manual and creator of three online posture programs. Today, we're going to talk about seat depth adjustment. On my kinops chair, here is how to adjust the seat depth. You see, I just pull underneath here and I slide back and forth. And you see, the rule that you will see in many ergonomics manuals is that you should have one fist uh, behind the knee fold. Why? Because if there's less than one fist, you will feel pressure here. And this pressure will make that you move forward in the seat. So you go away from the lumbar support and therefore you slouch. But the result of this advice or this formulation is that when people have very long upper legs, well, their tendency is to create sufficient space for having one fist here. Yeah. And as they're taller than me, they do touch the backrest. Well, do they really touch the backrest? This is the question. You see, actually, what happens on most chairs, including this one, is that when you slide the seat pan forward, you will create a gap here. And nobody will sit with his butt in a gap. Therefore, even tall people will sit maybe just a centimeter or two away from the backrest to remain on the cushion. And the result will be that they slouch. This will be even more the case if your chair has some kind of an upward slope here at the back. You see, some chairs are flat like these ones, some others they go like this. Yeah? And if your chair goes like this, well your pelvis is automatically guided to be here on the chair and when your butt is here on the chair, your belt is not against the lumbar support. So you see, on every chair that creates a gap here when you slide the seat pan back and forth, there is a serious problem about sticking to this rule of one fist. Is there now a real problem about having more than one fist here, i.e. more space? Well, you know, looking at the way the Capisco chair is built should already orient you to something. I mean, the Capisco chair is a very short chair. So if there would be a problem to have a short seat pan, why would so many people love the Capisco? But actually, let's say, we could imagine a problem, which is that as your weight rests on a less big surface, well, there's more pressure on the tissues and that increased pressure can reduce blood circulation, in theory at least. Because in practice, every person that I have seen with blood circulation problems um, in the office, not out of a genetic reason or something, yeah, every person I have seen is either sits too high and the problem is the pressure point here at the f under the front edge of the seat pan, or they sit for too long in a row. If you stay for two hours on your chair, no matter the seat depth, you will have blood circulation issues. So you see, if I cut a long story short, there is a serious problem about creating a gap here between the seat pan and the backrest. And on the other hand, there's no serious problem about having more space than one fist here. And therefore, the rule should not be that you want 1.0 fist here. The rule is that you need at least one fist here, but mainly you're looking for maximum pressure here. So what do I do when I adjust a chair? For example, the Capisco that can also slide back and forth. Well, first of all, you put the seat pan at the minimum, yeah? And you sit deep into the chair, adjust the backrest, and you calibrate your brains on feeling how much pressure you have here. Yeah? That pressure is proportional to the weight that you're giving to your chair, i.e. it's inversely proportional to how much weight rests onto your uh, tissues. Okay? So the more weight on the chair, the less remains on you to, cut, to make things simple. So step one, short seat uh, depth and I feel the pressure here. And then I, if I have largely more than one fist here, I will move the seat pan one click 
feel how much pressure I still have here. And if there's no change, I can go one click further. But as soon as I feel that the pressure behind my belt drops, that means there's less contact against the backrest. That means there's less weight transfer onto the chair. So it means I've gone too far and I should go back one click and stop where I do have the maximum pressure here. And usually on most chairs, this means that you can adjust by one or two clicks, but not more. On the Capisco, typically at click two, most people already feel a drop in the pressure on the back. This would not be a problem if the backrest would slide on top of the seat pan. If a chair designer is watching this video, well, this is what you should invent next, you know? I mean, I, it would not be an invention because I've seen it once or twice already. But when you have the backrest that slides on top of the seat pan or the seat pan that glides underneath the backrest, then you never have this gap here and the chair can be adjusted at any seat depth without any problem. So to cut a long story short, forget the 1.0 fist here. The rule is at least one fist here and maximum pressure of the backrest against your belt.